Hey, it's Michael from Mark Smarter. In this episode of How to Dynamo, you're going to learn how to calculate area ratios using Dynamo. So say you want to know the ratio of usable area to gross area in your project. This can be difficult to determine directly in Revit because you can't include gross area and rentable area in the same schedule. But with a little bit of Dynamo know-how, you can easily do this calculation. So let's switch on over to Revit and get started. I'm here in Revit and I have a really simple model set up for this example. And you can see I have some kind of gross area plans. I have two levels and they're really basic. It's just a rectilinear building. And then I also have some rentable area plans. And in these plans, I've used area lines to subdivide this into some kind of approximation of a floor plan with some units. And again, very simple, but I have five units here in this plan. And then on the second level, I'll switch onto that. And then I have another uh, five units with just a distribution of areas for them. And you'll see I've created uh, three different area types you can see unit type A, B, and C. And again, really schematic, uh, but a good example for this demonstration. Now let me switch into Dynamo and we'll build our script. So the first thing I wanna do in Dynamo is I wanna get our areas. So we're gonna to go to Revit, Selection, and I'm gonna use the All Elements of Category node. And since I may wanna use this script on multiple versions, of Revit, I'm going to use a code block to put my category name, which is going to be areas. And then in the Revit library, I'm going to go to elements, category, and I'm going to use the by name node. So basically, I'm going to hard code my category here. So we plug that into our category by name. That's going to return the category, and that will give us all elements of category. I'm going to set my run mode here to be automatic, just so it will uh, keep changing as we go through it. So I can see that there's actually 12 areas that it's returning. Now, I know my model is, is very basic, but uh, it's also it's pretty clean, so I don't have any unplaced areas. Uh, let me go ahead and group this. But if you're working in a project model, like, you know, it's possible that you could have some unplaced areas. And so that can actually kind of wreak havoc with your script. Let me just color this. So what I want to do first, once I've gotten the areas, is I want to filter out any of the unplaced areas. And the way I can do this is an unplaced area is going to uh, not have a value for the actual area parameter. So we have the, the area object that I place in Revit. That area object has an area parameter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that area parameter from our areas and I'm going to check whether or not it has a value. If it doesn't have a value, then um, you know I want to make sure that I don't use the ones that don't have a value. So to set this up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go again into our Revit library. I'm going to go to Elements and I'm going to scroll down to Parameters. And this is a good technique to use uh, anytime you think you know there's a chance you might have parameters that don't have values and you want to filter out those actual elements. So I'm going to use Parameter by Name here. Now I'm going to take my All Elements of Categories, so my list of areas, I'm going to plug that in. And the parameter that I want to get, again, is my area parameter. So when I connect this, this is going to return a list of parameters corresponding to my elements. So all of these parameters, my model's really clean, remember, um, they actually have a value. So I can see that here. But if they didn't, I, they would kind of show up as a null value. So I'm going to use a filter or a node here called has value. So this is also in Revit, per, Revit elements parameter. And this has value node returns true if that parameter has a value. So all of my parameters here return true because they do have values. If I had an unplaced area, that would actually show up as a false because that area that's unplaced does not have an area parameter value. All right, so now that I've done that filtering, what I can do next is I'm going to go up to list and I'm going to use the filter by Boolean mask right here. So I'm going to filter my all elements of category list, so all my areas, and I'm going to use my parameter has value mask. Again, that will filter out any unplaced areas uh, that don't have a, a value. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and group this. And again, this is a good technique. This is a good kind of 
group of nodes to use anytime you want to filter out elements that don't have a particular parameter value. So we'll just call this uh, filter out uh, unplaced areas. And can't type. Okay. Oh, no, I still can't type. All right, here we go. And let's give that a color. Can't click either. Oh no, here we go. Undo. <laughs> Let's change that. Third time's a charm. Excellent. Okay. So we filtered out those unplaced areas. Now we want to do another filter operation because we have some of our areas are gross areas and some of our areas are net. But if I look at our elements here in all elements of category, they just show up as an area. So there is kind of one global area, but again, I want to filter out. Uh, gross from net because I want to get my ratio of net area to gross area. So we're going to do this by we're going to get the area name and we're going to use that as our filter. So I'm going to go to Revit element element right here and we're going to use the element name node. Okay, there we go. Uh, da, 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 right there. Okay, so we have the element name node. So I'm going to take the in output from my filter by Boolean mask, these are gonna be all of the areas that have a value. So that's gonna be coming out of the in. These are basically all the um, elements that have a true value for our has value node. So we're gonna plug that into element name. And this is gonna give me the name of all of the areas. And you can see I have area one, area two, and then I have unit type. Uh, some of the, I can't spell also in my model, I have unit and unity type, not sure how that happened, but area one and two, if I go back into Revit, those are going to be my gross areas. So I'm actually using the, I can see there's the unit and unity types. And if I go into my area plans, I can see here's my gross area. So I'm going to use the area names to filter gross area from my net area. And I'm just going to, I can click through real quick on my area plans themselves just to go ahead and confirm that. Okay, so that looks like that'll be a good way that I can do that that filtering. Back in Dynamo, we'll take that element name and to kind of check the element name, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the string contains node. So I can find that under, let's see, string and I'm going to go to inspect and I'm going to take contains. So we'll take our name node. That's going to be our string. We're going to search for area from my name, my area name. And what that's going to do now is return a true or false if that string is inside or that string contains that particular uh, search for phrase. So we're looking for area. I could also look for unit or type. I just need some way to differentiate, um, you know, my gross areas from my, my rentable or my net areas. Okay. So much like we did filtering out our areas that don't have a value, we're going to use a filter by Boolean mask to separate out our two different area types. So I can click on my node here. I'm going to do a control C, control V, and then let me just replug things here. So we'll take our list that we're going to be filtering is coming out of that filter by Boolean mask. And then our mask is going to be our string contains. So this should provide me with two lists now, a list containing the areas that contain area in the name, and then all the other areas. For me, given the way that I've named things in my model, this separates out between my gross areas and then my net or rentable areas. All right. So we've done that. Now we can go ahead and we can do our calculations. So with the two groups, I'm going to get the area parameter again, but I want to get the parameter value. So I'm going to go to Revit elements element, and I'm going to use the get parameter value by name. So I don't want just the parameter object. I actually want the particular value. And I'm going to do this kind of twice. I'm going to do it once for our gross and then also again for our net area. So the parameter, uh, let me do this. Uh, our element is going to be, we're going to use both of our in and out outputs. And then the parameter we want to get is area. 
So you can see we're using that area parameter quite a bit in this script. Uh, one to kind of filter out the unused areas. And then again, we're actually getting the area value. So if I hover over get parameter value by name, I can see I'm getting the two gross areas up top. Those are coming out of the in output. And then I'm getting all of the uh, net or rentable areas on the bottom, and those are coming out of the out output. So now that I have those, I have those two lists of values, I'm going to sum them up using the math functions and the sum node. So what the sum node will do, and we'll use two instances of that, it takes a list of numbers and it just adds them up, real simple. So let's connect those two. And so that'll give us our sum value for gross area, 12,000, and then our sum value for our rentable area, which is uh, 9,900. So now that I have those two values, I can actually calculate my ratio. And I can do that a couple ways. I'm going to do this first uh, by, let me go to operators here under math, and I'm just going to divide my net area here by my gross area. And that's going to give me a decimal value if I zoom in of um, 0.825. So my ratio of net to gross is 82.5%. Now, if I want to clean this up a little bit, I'm going to use a code block. And inside the code block, I'm just going to type the value. I'm going to say net, and I'm going to do divided by gross times 100. So I can get the percentage. Now, when I type a, a a string but without quotes in a code block, it's going to assume that's going to be an input. So you can see as soon as I click outside of the node, I get inputs for net and gross. So these are essentially creating variables inside the code block. So I can take my net value, I can take my gross value here, and then that's going to do that math, it's going to do that division and then multiply it by 100, and that's going to give me 82.5. So my net to gross ratio is 82.5%. So I could run this script at any point during my project if I want to calculate those values and get that, that ratio number. And all I need to do is just make sure I have a, a clear way to separate my gross area from my net area, and then the Dynamo script does the rest. So we'll do a last kind of cleanup here. Let me... Oh, I got a little bit of cleanup. Uh, let me go ahead and I'm going to group these nodes and do that real quick. And we'll call this calculate areas. And we'll give this a color. And then we'll do the same where we were filtering our nodes right here. And I could do this for a variety of different calculations that I want. You know, maybe I just need a, a quick number. But again, sometimes Revit doesn't provide me with the ways that I can actually easily do that. So Dynamo is great in that regard because I can, you know, combine different uh, element types and do some math on them. And let's say filter gross from net. Okay. And then, you know, output those values however I want. Here I'm just outputting them to a, you know, just as sort of a little text box. Um, I could also, if I want to, I could add a watch note here at the end just to make it a little bit easier to see what that resultant value is rather than hovering over. Um, so I can see here it's going to show me there's my watch note. If I wanted to, I could output this to Excel. Um, if I'm using, you know, I could build a pop-up if I'm going to build out an interface in my Dynamo script. I have a lot of options in terms of how to make that easier. But really the key part to all of this, if we zoom out a little bit here, is first getting our areas, filtering our areas, so filtering out on placed, then filtering gross from net, and then ultimately doing our math right here. So once I get to that point, again, I have a lot of options for how I can output. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of How to Dynamo. If you did, go ahead and click the subscribe button to get more Revit automation tutorials. Also, check out my free Dynamo template using the link over there. This template contains 20 node groups for common Dynamo actions, and it'll save you a ton of time when you're creating your scripts. Just copy and paste the groups you want, and you're on your way. All right, that's all from me. I hope to see you soon. Bye.